So nobody can fly right now because, you know, you don't want to sit right next to somebody else who's coughing. But uh, we all would like to go to Hawaii. I'd like to go there for my very first time ever. <laughs> It'd be great to go to Hawaii. Um, and planes are, are kind of, you know, they're everywhere. But they would not have been here or they'd have different inventors if the Wright brothers hadn't tried so hard. So back in the day when, like, the Wright brothers were alive and stuff, people tried to make airplanes out of you know, straight wings like this. And what the Wright brothers understood is that if you curve the wing like this, it actually starts going up instead of wanting to flip over. It, it's crazy because the people of the day didn't mostly either give a shit. Nobody cared. Like their, their own local newspaper wouldn't even report on the plane. The plane. Holy cow. The, the first airplane flying directly overhead. That, that wasn't news. And the published data said that, the, uh, that this was the way to build a wing. <laughs> Even though birds have curved wings, right? Like, is this crazy? Um, and so they, they kept going, though. They kept going. And I didn't know that Kitty Hawk was like a big sand dune, right? Next to like a big swampy lake thing. And there was mosquitoes everywhere. Um, and it was hell. They almost gave up like three different times. And it was it was their friend's encouragement that literally kept them going. They said, hey, you keep going. <laughs> like, they're like, no, huh? too many mosquitoes, man. We're tired of like making biscuits in the wind. Um, and, and so... One of the things that I think our world needs most right now is literally a new power source, right? We got nuclear and that's death. We got coal and that's stupid. We got natural gas. We got global warming. We got all these deals with the devil that we try making um, in order to kind of keep things going the way that they've been going. But we're used to energy being like this dirty thing. You know, energy companies, who's that? BP? BP is an energy company and they're going to spill oil everywhere just so we can drive to work? That's, that's super, super dumb, and it's time for that to go away. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to show you just a little tidbit of maybe what ends up being uh, the curved wing of the next generation. Um, and I don't expect you to care. Nobody cared about the White Brothers. I don't care if the newspaper wants to publish anything. Uh, you got to take the insight and keep rolling with it, even if they call you crazy. Here's, here's the energy equation for an inductor. Now, inductors are everywhere. They're inside the, the little parts inside your computer and your smartphone. They're what literally power the chips. Um, and they're like a, a little magnetic spring. So when we put some electrons through, um, they, they want to keep going. It's, 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 it stores energy like a spring. And so there's an equation for that where we call W is, is the watts or the energy. And it's half times the measure of inductance or how much spring is in the spring uh, times the current squared or how much tension uh, there is on the spring. Now, it, normally in, in most smartphones and computers and whatever else, this inductance, it's like a little box and it's soldered to the circuit board. Um, and it's a constant value, you know, like 1.2 microhenries. And engineers don't really like it when it changes. And so we, we, we change the current all over the place. And what we find is that when the current goes up and the current goes down, the energy goes up and the energy goes down. And at the end of the day, you get out what you put in. You just get out what you put in. I mean, we're used to that, right? You put a gallon in a bucket, a gallon in a bucket of water, a gallon of water in a bucket of water, of water just, I don't know what. But you're going to only pour a gallon out. Like, it's not rocket science, even if I can't say it right. You know what I'm saying, right? Like, you're going to get a gallon out if you put a gallon in. But energy would be like pressure. So imagine putting a gallon in a five-gallon bucket, and all of a sudden you squeeze the bucket, and the water comes squirting out, right? And the water would maybe squirt a lot further than it did when you just poured it in. Now, that would be more energy, but we'd have to squeeze the bucket, which in this formula would mean changing L. Squeezing the bucket, changing the, the volume or the springiness of the spring. So right here we have uh, an inductor that I just put on the desk. And this has got like three turns of telephone cross-connect wire. So if you end up, you know, uh, driving over one of those little green things sticking out of the dirt, you know, it's got the telephone connections in it. You bust it with your car, there's all going to be this wire coming out. In fact, here's a, here's a whole spool of it, right? You can see it's like 50 bucks for this big spool of wire. Like Inventor's Playground, you got all the wire you ever need, 50 bucks. All right, cough it up and you're good. Because I bought this thing like... 20 years ago and I'm only halfway through and I got a whole nother box um, but if you if you run over the green thing you'll you'll find it's full of this so I took a little bit and I wound it around this ferrite core now this is basically rust it's like the most earth abundant stuff uh, that, that's really out there I mean it's iron oxide right <laughs> it's like the the principal thing that the earth is made of even the mantle of the earth is iron oxygen everywhere um, and if you make iron oxide and you dope it with a little bit of uh, special sauce just like our computer chips are doped with it makes this ferrite core now this one's big they, they use these in all kinds of you know big military stuff and whatever else and it costs like a 100 bucks is giant 
So I, I put some of this wire around it and I've got it hooked up to a meter that will show me its inductance. And so if we take a look here, we have the inductance of 27 microhenries, right? And we have a little bit of energy loss. Now, funny though, is, is if you look at the inductance, it's changing. It's not even a constant value. Inside of this ordinary looking, you know, like kind of donut ring thing, there's all kinds of magnetic atoms and they're spinning and they're getting bombarded by the, the molecular motions of ambient heat. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And that's, that's, the, that's the big lie that I think that we might overcome if we're really smart as a species and get our heads out of our butts is that perpetual motion is everywhere, right? If you've got a big enough microscope or a big enough telescope, you'll see it. Big enough telescope, you're going to see that there's nothing still in the universe. It's always moving. It's always spinning. It's always going somewhere. It can't sit still. And the same thing is true if you have a, the best microscope in the world. It is, nothing holds still. Nothing holds still. It can't hold still. It's always moving. And so the illusion of things grinding to a halt is it's kind of something at our human scale. Because at the tiny scale and at the huge scale, that's never the case. The way the universe is built is everything's in motion all the time. And so why do we need gasoline to keep our cars in motion and poison ourselves in the process? Everything's in motion all the time. But it would be a little bit like if I took like a radio, you know, I go to my big old speakers here and I'm going to go to like the caveman. I'm going to see, check this out, check this out, man. And I'm going to press play, right? And so like the caveman is going to be like, where's the music? What is this crazy noise? What's going on? Woo! And even if you you might play him some pretty pretty music, here's some pretty music. Pretty. And the where's the piano? <laughs> like, who's making this sound? And it wouldn't make any sense if you showed a caveman a radio. He would look inside the box. He'd look inside the box and say, Where, "Where's the people?" Right? Even if you showed Mozart a radio, he wouldn't quite be able to believe that this sound was coming out of the thin air. And yet, we as a society are kind of reluctant to believe that we can just pull energy out of the thin air, unless it's like a solar panel, but that requires the sun. What if we could just pull energy out of thin air? Would that really be so bad? Would it really be so impossible? Would it, would it be worth, you know, telling people they're barking up the wrong tree? So, I mean, math is math, and the math here is really simple. So if, if we're going to increase our current... And we're going to change this inductance while we're increasing and de decreasing current like like we do everywhere. Like, I mean, in any piece of electronics, right? That's basically going on. There's current changing. It's what powers stuff. Like, I got lights on the ceiling right here where that's happening all the time, and it's why the lights are lit. But in these things, L, this inductance L is pretty much constant. So if we vary L along with current, we can start to see that, yeah, energy goes up and down. But instead of just sort of being the sum zero game, you know, where we put some in and we get some out and, you know, the, pour the water into the bucket and whatever else, we can get something like this, like where the energy goes up. And we see that all the time in gasoline engines, right? There, there's more forward torque than there is backward torque and the car goes forward. We're, we're used to that, but we're not used to being able to pull that kind of magic out of thin air. And I'm not saying thin air is empty or we're creating energy out of nowhere. I'm just saying that we're awash in energy and perpetual motion is the way the universe is. So let's go back to our happy little donut ring over here. And we're going to see that, uh, okay, we've still got 27 and change of micro Henry's. And if we can cause that number to change in a way that we don't have to pay for with fuel or uranium or some other poisonous crap or... <laughs> we can just get it to change based on a form of energy that's all around us everywhere anyway then it's a total win right because stuff that they can't charge you for like air and water become the resource of the future um and nestle will try to sell you some water aquafina you know buck a bottle if you're lucky and you can find it for cheap air still not on sale but one of the things that we find that is abundantly available is ambient heat even in this day there's certain you know truthers that'll say that there's too much ambient heat and the the the, the poles are melting and the oceans are rising and then then there's a whole other bunch of people that want to argue about it but the argument becomes moot if we can just find a way to power our lives that doesn't require fire and doesn't require poison and doesn't require the stupidity of the past. Because it's really dumb to poison ourselves on the way to prosperity. What kind of prospering are we doing if we're dying in the process? So all we have to do is get this little number on the top to change and change it in a way that we don't have to pay for with fuel. It's literally that simple.
and there's all kinds of ways to do it. So next, uh, you know, I only have one camera, but I'm going to I'm going to squeeze this thing with my hands. I'm going to grab it like this and we're going to watch the inductance change. So uh, th there there we are. Let's see if we can zoom in on this old camera. Okay, yeah, 20 27.9 and we give it a good squeeze. Whoa, 28.5. And then I'm letting it go and it's going back down. I'm going to squeeze it again and it went back up. So we know that just by squeezing this thing we're changing the stress between the atoms we're changing the interatomic distance we're changing a whole bunch of stuff that goes on at the atomic level here and so wouldn't you know it we're able to change this number pretty easily just by squeezing something like a sponge now of course that takes a little bit of our effort to do we wouldn't want to have like an accordion that we have to play to keep the house lit so maybe there's a different way to get that number uh to change um, now, all this stuff is magnetic, of course, and, and magnetism is fascinating. It, it's even cooler than Fortnite, I promise. Um, and it's real. So when you win, you get to actually keep something. <laughs> I like magnets. So sue me. And this is a whole bunch of magnets. So let's, let's put that next to the core um, and, and see, see if our magic number changes. See if, if we can light up the future without having to have nuclear fallout already. So, um, all we're, okay, here we have it. Oh, and you know what? And the number's changing, like, all over the place, from, like, 29 to 30 or whatever. And I'm only just, like, moving it over here, right? So I'm going to bring it close and let, let's, see what, let's see what happens. So we're at 29. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Oh, now it's, now it's gone down, so we've got to change. Now it's back to 31. Like, the number's all over the place, just depending on where um, I put this magnet. So that's another way to change the magic L in our magic formula, all we have to do is move a magnet around. But again, we're, we're, we're pushing a magnet. There's gotta be something causing the magnet to move and I don't wanna have to ride an exercise bike to keep my house lit. So this is not a hair dryer, although <laughs> I kind of wanna try it because like you turn this thing on, it, it's like, it's a lot of power um, and the inside gets So let's, let's try that. And before we do, let's, you know, I can't really splice a video in here. So you're going to have to Google Zitter Bewe Gung. Z-I-T-T-E-R, Z-I-T-T-E-R-B-E-W-E-G-U-N-G. Zitter Bewe Gung, a uh, German word. I hope I spelled it right. <laughs> so the, the way to show this thing is you take fern spores, right? Like you have a beautiful fern and the beautiful woods and it's going to last until the bulldozers come and you take the the fern spores and you put them in water and then you, you, and a little drop of water right and then you stick that in a microscope and what what the fern spores are doing is they're they're moving around they're like all over the place and nobody's pushing them nobody's pushing them they're the fern spores are like these little dots right in the water and they're going this way and that no what what, what what's moving them it's heat right because heat is the vibration of molecules so molecules are moving around all the time as long as things are at like room temperature even at freezing even when it's like icy outside, that's still 273 degrees above absolute zero or something. Um, and those are Kelvin degrees, which are the same as Celsius degrees. So you have to think in Celsius or whatever. But um, Celsius is, is zeroed out where water freezes and Kelvin is zeroed out where physics freezes. But a degree is a degree. Um, and, and so even, I mean, the point is, is even on, on, on a, like a cold, cloudy, crappy wear your coat kind of day we still got 273 degrees worth of heat there's still plenty of atomic motion going on even though we kind of feel like stopping cold in our tracks right so ambient heat is everywhere and some people would say especially the most informed and learned and educated phds among us that we have too much of that these days that the ice is melting and the earth is slowly slipping out of equilibrium so what if we could use heat to change that magic number and make power. We've got a resource that everybody even wants to get rid of. It's negative value. It's like oil in the days of COVID. <laughs> They'll pay you to take it. So this is funny. Ever since we brought Mr. Magnet along, we're up to 30 and we started out at, at 29. Um, and so let's see what happens when we take the not a hair dryer. Like, I'm gonna burn my hair. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Damn, that's hot. Okay, <laughs> and this is used for like shrinking heat shrink tubing, right? It's like a thousand degrees. Um, and so we're, we're going to warm up this core a little bit. 
Um, and we're starting out at like 30.6. And, and we know that if we change that number, like we have the capacity to generate electricity in a way that doesn't uh, require anything. So we're gonna change the heat or the thermal energy in this core a little bit. And it, so, you know, after, after a minute or two of doing that, we're like up to 33. So we've changed our L value and it's still going up because the heat is still distributing over the, the core. So um, it, it's, it's changed enough to actually make a power source out of. Um, and it doesn't really feel too much different. It's a little bit warmer than before. So we see that heat and energy are correlated in a way that we can use. Now, I don't know about you, I've been through an MRI machine a couple of times, right? And you can't have keys in your pocket, you can't have anything nearby because the magnetism is so powerful, um, it'll just, it'll goof you up. It, like here, for example, is, is a magnet that I'm kind of afraid of. It's about the size of a Campbell's soup can. Um, and if you get things near it, like the, you know, the metal will just sort of hang by itself and point toward it. But MRI machines are horrible in this respect. You know how big they are. Um, and if you have keys, they can rip out of the jeans uh, that you're wearing. They'll, they'll come out of the denim and, and literally tear themselves away. And where they land, you know, the, the, nobody knows, but it's a hospital. So at least they got you covered. Um, <laughs> it, at some point, you know... MRIs are pretty amazing. They, they run on liquid helium. Um, and helium is liquefied actually using magnets. So when a magnetic material like this is uh, magnetized, it actually heats up a little bit. And when it's demagnetized, then it cools down a little bit. And this is true of just about any and all magnetic materials out there. And we, we've already seen that when we heat up a magnetic material or cool it down, um, that we, we have a, a change in its magnetic value. So we can clearly understand that heat and magnetism are intimately related. They are kind of the same. And what we find is that heat energy and magnetic energy share a room. It's a little bit like if you have a roommate with like 16,000 boxes full of crap and it crowds you out. You're going to be like, yo, get rid of your crap, right? And your roommate is heat and your magnetism or vice versa. They have to share a space. And so when we put some heat into a magnetic material, it crowds out the magnetism. And when we put some magnetism into a material, it crowds out the heat. So the two kind of change places. I will tell you that there is definitely a way to combine magnets like the one I have in our in my hands here and in, in the ambient heat inside a piece of magnetizable material so that we can pull thermal energy out of the environment and what that means is something starts getting cold and it makes the best invention ever right because this thing is emitting electricity it's able to literally power stuff charge your phone run your computer light your lights and it also gets cold so it's like a beer cooler with a free power bill in there's a huge amount of experimentation that has to go on to figure out how to do this. And I, I couldn't even show you ever that is here, all, all the different experiments that have been done um, to try to secure this effect. And, and really, if, if you, if you read about the history of people who have discovered things before, um, they, they had to try like so many stupidly different things. I mean, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but this stuff's got cobwebs on it. It goes on and on and on just by the strength of one's personal convictions. You have to put up in the mosquitoes in the sand and make biscuits in the wind. You have to brainstorm. And more than that, I mean, you, you got to write it down. You got to make sure that you have a living record of everything you've come up with because physics is bigger than the human brain. It has to be. If the brain were bigger than the physics, we'd have it figured out right now. And we wouldn't have to figure out where to, like, bury the nuclear waste. This is one little piece of what I'm building. <laughs> and I'm not here to try to change your mind. I'm not trying to, hear, to do anything. But actually, I am here to just give you a little tidbit. That every time we talk about the future, we envision something that doesn't exist yet. Every time we talk about the future, we have a hope for what the world could become. So maybe let's just second guess it when BP calls themselves an energy company. And at the end of the day, <laughs> all it takes is one little tiny insight. That a curved wing will lift. Well, this was the established wisdom in the Wrights Brothers' day, like in the 1900s. 
that you just wanted this tilted surface not a curve just a surface and people kept like crashing into the ground they were so in love with the fact that this was the way to do things that they could not yet fly and it sort of takes a rare cat to keep building and building and building while everybody else is you know doing the fun stuff and buying a new rv and you're gonna have a lot of failures on the way, right? We all remember that thing about like Thomas Edison and his 3,000 light bulbs that didn't work. And he was genius enough to say, I found 3,000 ways that don't work and I've crossed them off my list. You know, they, they used to say, oh, a person would never do that. They'd fly before they'd do such a thing, right? <laughs> That was a popular phrase in the White Brothers' day. It was, oh, man, would so no longer, you know, no sooner do that than fly. And then they flew. Energy is not fuel. Energy is not fossil fuel. Energy is something very different than the stuff we burn and buy and burn and buy. Power is not pollution. And the thing I love most about the future is that it tends to bring up things that we never expected would ever happen and suddenly they do.